Guys, some things we all have in common with one with another. We have uh, a lot of things that are different between us, but there are some commonalities as well. One thing we have in common is that there's somebody that cares about us, knows us even better than we could possibly know ourselves. He has uh, infinitely more control over our lives than we do, and uh, he loves us more than we love ourselves. And I'll write his name right here. That's, of course, God. I want to talk to you about God today. Not a religion, not some cosmic weird force out there, but a real person. That's what it is. Can you read what that says? Why were you born? Thank you, whoa, that's a big question. We know if we don't have answers to life's big questions, you can go through life with no purpose or direction. Why were you born? What is it that makes life worth living? Well, the answer to this question is no longer a mystery to me, or to those who know God's word, the Bible. For the Bible, the first page, first sentence says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And uh, the beauty of life, that's a gift from God. It says in the word that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, nor a shadow of turning. That means he's not going to betray you. He's not going to turn on you. You can trust in him. And, and I want to talk to you about something today that is all around us, but something that you need in your heart. It's something that can only come from the Lord. Truly, the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the earth. He created into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. There's a lot of beauty. The reason we see beauty around us is because of the Lord God. God created each one of us that we might have a relationship with him. How's your relationship with your maker? Do you talk to him? Does he talk to you? Is he the one who guides your life? What about God is so beautiful? Well, it's who he is that's so beautiful. It's his character, his promises. He is always true. He is always good. So he's good, kind, he's merciful, he's holy, holy, holy. He's eternal, he's infinite, and he's beautiful. God gave each one of us us the same in the whole world and God is a holy God and we're precious to him he created us in his own image you can see my body but you can't see my mind or my heart and God has given a gift to every single person on the street today the gift that God has given to each one of us is right here it's the gift of life that's a special type of life. Eternal life, your life that will never end. Our bodies die, they go back into the ground. Our spirits will live on in one of two places. Now God did not make us like a programmed robot. He gave us intellect, the ability to think and to understand. He gave us emotions, the ability to love and also to hate. But he also gave each one of us a free will or the ability to choose. Unfortunately, man has chosen to be independent from God and to go his own way. And in doing so, he, he's going farther and farther away from his maker. Holiness is sinfulness. God has no imperfection in him, but we have imperfection in us because of our sin. The bad things that we say, that we think, that we do. Uh, you know, everybody's had a bad thought in their life. I know I have. So that leads us to fact number two, ladies and gentlemen. And although it's not the nicest of the, the five facts, it's one that will change your life if you come to understand and embrace it uh, rightly. It's this right here. Is that man, man sins. Each and every one of us has done something wrong. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, man, uh, man chose to rebel against God. This is what God's word calls sin. Now, God had warned the first man and woman that if they were to disobey his word, that this would bring a curse called death. And indeed it has, and this is what we experience in this world. But 
God was not taken by surprise. God had a plan. You see, God was going to send a Savior, and he promised Adam and Eve to send a Savior. Maker. But God's not willing that any should perish. He invites us to trust him, to do an about face, to turn our back on our sin and put our trust in the one who loves us, and now our life will take on a whole new direction. That about face is simply called repentance, where we change our mind. Instead of ignoring God, we go to him. You see, there's a place that's full of beauty, even to this day, that has not been cursed by sin. It does not have the curse of death, and that is heaven. That is God's perfect throne. In, in habitat where the angels worship him constantly forevermore and you know what God is going to keep that place holy he's going to keep that place perfect and he's not going to let sin into that perfect place this is a big problem because we're all sinners so God made a plan to reconcile our relationship to God deliver us from our sin save us from our sin and from the curse of sin which is death. What is this plan? It's not going to church. It's not doing good things. It's not keeping a set of rules. It's God actually reaching down to us. The Father, our one. Jesus is of the same essence of God. He is God. And His life is eternal. This is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. It's this right here. The only one who could ever do this decided to, and that's this word right here. Jesus paid the cost for our sin by dying on the cross and rising again. The Bible tells us uh, that God demonstrated his own love towards us then while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For I deliver to you as of first importance, says the Bible, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ paid the cost for our sin with his life on that cross. And uh, we know this, that he died in order that we may know the living God. Our loving creator loved us so much that he sent his own son to leave eternity and come down to earth as a man so that we might see exactly who God is and what he is like. What did Jesus do when he was here on earth? He not only could heal the sick, restore the lame, speak to the winds and the waves, and bring calm to the sea, but he also gave an invitation to anyone with a listening ear. He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. He said, I am the good shepherd, just as a shepherd watches over his flock, see if they're protected from wolves and from lions, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I'll even lay down my life before I'll let anything harm my sheep. He said, whoever is thirsty, come to me. I have something I want you to have. He said, I will give you living water. Talking about his Holy Spirit. He said, I will give you living water that shall become within your heart a well of water bring up on the everlasting life. The same Christ who walked on the earth 2,000 years ago died on a cruel cross. It was the spiritual aspect of what was happening on that cross. You see, God, who had totally taken on human flesh, had never known sin, had a perfect relationship within himself, God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. He became sin for us who knew no sin. And when that happened, the, God the Father had to turn his back on God the Son. And the wrath of God was poured out on Jesus Christ. The wrath of God that we deserve for our sin, that curse of death, Jesus took it upon himself 2,000 years ago so that you and I could be forgiven. He was killed, not for anything that he had done wrong, but as the Lamb of God, he gave his life so that all who trust him might have their sins forgiven. Be able to lay down their, their burdens and have peace in their heart. Have a relationship with God with no barrier in between. Christ died on that cruel cross. 
He gave his body as a sacrifice to pay for my sin and for your sin. He was placed into a tomb, dead. But being God the Son, death and the grave could not hold him. The same Christ who walked on the earth 2,000 years ago is not dead in the grave. He arose from the grave. He's alive today. And all who put their trust in him receive a new heart. Instead of a heart that says, God, you might be up there, but you're not worth knowing. It's a heart that says, you did that for me. You gave your life that I might have my sins forgiven. I want to know that love. I need you in my life. I want to know how I can be set free from my sins. Free to live a life of joy and of peace. I want to live with you. This is the requirement right here for us to know God, is to trust in Him, ladies and gentlemen. This is what Jesus asked us to do. He said of Himself, He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who lives and believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? That's the condition for eternal life, ladies and gentlemen is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Believe what? Believe what about him? Trust that he died on the cross for your sins, that he was buried in the tomb, and that he had the authority to lay his life down, but he had the authority to take it back up again. These are unchangeable facts, ladies and gentlemen. Five facts that will change your life. God is holy. Man sins. Sin has a cost. Jesus paid that cost. And if we trust in Him, we can receive the free gift of eternal life. So you might say, I want to know God. I want to walk with Him and live with Him. How can I do that? It's easy. Turn from your sins. Put your trust in the one who loves you. And He will now Invite him to come into your heart and life. And now you can live life with God instead of apart from God. We come to God saying, I, I want to receive your grace. I need your mercy. I need your compassion, your forgiveness. Please come into my heart. I open my heart and I invite you to come in.